On the show today, Liberty Athletics has found a new home where the Flames are headed and reaction from those involved. Then LU softball is going dancing. We recap an exciting Big South tournament and look ahead to what's next for the Lady Flames. Game on starts right now. Welcome to Game On. He's Rhett. I'm Matt. Bobby's coming up. And Rhett, I'm not one for hyperbole, Ooh. but this show is huge. Yeah, we thought huge. we'd be leading off with Liberty teams winning titles yep. and going to NCAA regionals, but hard to believe we've got something better. Liberty Athletics has announced a brand new home. That is right. A new era in Liberty Athletics is about to begin as on Thursday, Liberty announced that they would be leaving the Big South Conference following this season and joining the A-Sun. Game On was at the press conference announcing this major decision, and we spoke to many of the key figures involved. For the first time since 1991, Liberty Athletics will have a new home. On Thursday, it was announced that 17 of the Flames programs will be leaving the Big South Conference and will join the A-Sun beginning in the 2018-19 athletic seasons. To Liberty University, President Falwell and all of you here today, welcome to your conference, the A-Sun Conference. The move has been hailed by both sides as a perfect fit in terms of competition on the field and institutional philosophy off it. Our strengths and you alls strengths are going to make us stronger together as partners, and I think that's really where we are. Um, I think it's, all, it's terrific for you guys, not just from an athletic standpoint, but from the university standpoint. It makes so much sense for you to be in our conference. There's just great synergy between the A-Sun and Liberty. We're both uh, very student-athlete centric. Um, both are uh, very progressive and uh, we're honored to be uh, A-Sun members. The Flames now join eight other A-Sun schools. And while the geography that the Flames will be navigating is certainly different, the bigger focus now for Flames coaches is becoming familiar with the teams and personnel they'll soon be facing. There's a lot of respect and admiration we have for those teams and there's programs and there's uh, institutions that we'll be playing against. Uh, we've been admiring them from, from afar. Now uh, we, we better really know more about them and their, their style of play. Uh, you know, we're going to have to be pre preparing for eight teams instead of they have prepared for one new team. And uh, so that'll be huge challenges for us. Florida Gulf Coast, we've never played them. Stetson, we've never played them. You know, there's a lot of, you know, wandering around in the dark because, you know, uh, you know, we're not sure what these teams look like and we haven't played them before. Uh, but, you know, like we say to our guys, you know, we'd rather light a candle than curse the darkness. So let's light a candle with this opportunity. The last year and a half have seen Liberty Athletics advance to new heights and the Flames now appear to have positioned themselves to succeed on a bigger stage than ever before. It's been an amazing 18 months and uh, um, to go to uh, FBS football and to join the ASUN conference within that period of time is really remarkable. So uh, we're eager to get underway and uh, things are going in uh, an exciting direction. Man, such an exciting time. It seems like a day does not go by without some form of breaking news around here and sticking with the norm. Let's jump into the Big South softball action where the Flames were taking on the Radford Highlanders. LU was hoping to capture their first title since 2011. We head into the second inning where the Flames had the bases loaded with a two-out rally. Autumn Bishop at the dish, and she would line a double to right, scoring two runs. Her production throughout the tourney would have her name tournament MVP. Back into the game, top of the third, Lauren Madry would steal second. Eventually, she would be brought home by Gagliano, who would send a two-out double to left center, cutting the Flames' lead to just one. Bottom of the fourth, and who else? Another Bishop. This time, Amber would give the Flames the insurance they desired. A three-run double down the left field line would make it 5-1 LU. That would be the final score, earning Liberty the Big South title and extending their season, a moment that Coach Richardson and her team have been striving for. You can tell what it means to them. Listen to them. They've got a ring, um, but, you know, they just they play not for titles and championships. They don't play for rings. They play for the pure enjoyment of honoring the Lord, expressing the gifts he's given them in the sport. There's a true love for the game. 
There's a true love for each other. I just hope everyone enjoys watching them as much as I do coaching them. This team is just unbelievable. The family atmosphere we have, um, whether you're doing it for the girl behind you and the girl beside you and you're not doing it for yourself and it's awesome, you know, all the glory to God for all of us. He's blessed this team unbelievably. And, you know, we've prayed over the season so many times and, you know, we're reaping what we finally sowed. And so Liberty would be headed to its first NCAA regional since 2011, but where would they be playing? Well, this reaction came to seeing their name on the screen as part of the Columbia, South Carolina Regional. Liberty drawing a destination a little less than five hours down the road in a place they should be quite familiar with. Here's a look at the entire four-team region. The Flames leading off the double elimination tourney against Hofstra. The reason I mentioned Liberty should be familiar with these surroundings in Columbia is because they actually played a tournament there earlier this season even squaring off against host South Carolina. So that experience gives the Lady Flames plenty of reason for optimism. We are so pumped. Um, we kind of figured it'd be somewhere that was pretty near here. So um, especially that we're already kind of familiar with the field, that definitely makes things a little better. Um, but we are so excited. I think it's a great region for us to be at for regionals and uh, um, just to see the excitement of the girls too when we are listed up there playing Hofstra to start. and. Being at South Carolina where we were previously this year, uh, it could all pay off in a good way. So we're just trusting the Lord and uh, excited to have the opportunity. Well, glad to be joined now by Bobby Bowling. Bobby, we just saw, obviously, the Lady Flames super stoked, but they weren't the only ones. The rest of Flames Nation were happy for them as well. Right, let me tell you, if you are on any kind of social media, Twitter was lit oh, yeah. over the weekend with all different LU programs reaching out, congratulating mm -hmm. the Lady Flames. We saw shout-outs from the Liberty soccer team, the women's lacrosse team, wishing them the best of luck in the tournament. We even heard from the Liberty track and field team, who I ought to mention was also winning championships that day. Yeah, they're veterans and this kind of thing. And they took the time to reach out and congratulate the Flames. But let me tell you, one of my favorite tweets tell came me. from Lavelle Cabell from the men's basketball oh, team. Oh, yeah. He kept it short and simple, tweeting a, go a goat emoji. Oh. You know, and really, what, what else do you need to describe this team other than a That's goat? That's right. Right? Yeah. But I, I think the best tweet of the day came from the football team tweeting out a video of sophomore wide receiver Antonio Gandy Golden celebrating oh, on the sideline. Oh, H-E-G. Now, no, not sure how they made this graphic, but I will okay. say we should get one of you doing that. Yes. Get a graphic going. I think that'd be great. I was a great wide receiver back in the day. <laughs> Fun times. Great to see that all the Flames have so much support for the Lady Flames. Yeah, totally, totally. Matt, back over to you. Yeah, thank you guys. A lot of excitement around here. So while softball is playing in an NCAA regional, Liberty Golf just completed regional play this week. The Flames are one of 14 teams competing in the three-day Raleigh, North Carolina regional with the top five teams advancing to the NCAA Golf National Championship. Now, Liberty would be in seventh place heading into the final day of competition, and then a hot start to the final round had them all the way up to fifth. In fact, they were still in the fifth spot with three holes left to play before eventually falling back to their final place on the leaderboard, tied for eighth. The Flames were led by senior Mickey DeMorat, whose four under par score for the tournament was the 16th best individual score at the regional. A tough finish to the season, but also a lot to be proud of and a lot of talent still returning next season for the Flames. Well, sticking with golf, former PGA great Sam Snead once said, of all the hazards, fear is the worst. And that was exactly the case for Flames' Irvin Chang, who a year ago was questioning his ability and placement in the sport. Fast forward to the present, and all those laboring hours of work have paid off for Irvin, who is now a key cog for Liberty Golf. Um, Malaysia is a small country. It's basically like the size of Florida. And it's the culture that's a little different. Um, the food is different. I love the food in the United States, but I do enjoy my, my home country food. I'm currently ranked number one in Malaysia right now, according to World Amateur Golf Ranking. All the golfers, when we get them, they, they go through transitions, and freshman year is definitely a hard transition, especially when you're coming from overseas. He did struggle in the spring. Um, it's not like high school golf. Um, you're playing real competition, uh, real courses. You know, when guys leave collegiate golf and go to the PGA, one of the first things they say is the PGA Tour is set up easier than the collegiate, high collegiate tournaments. After shooting 88, and I was going in my head, is this is golf really a right spot for me? 
um, worry about too much about my swing. That's I have too much worries in my head. Like, oh my gosh, I'm not playing good, and I'm, I was just afraid of being dropped out of the team. Honestly speaking, I was a little homesick. With it from uh, away from my family, away from my friends back home, they play a big part as well. Um, for our guys, you know, we just tell them, listen, we believe that God brought every one of you guys here for a purpose, and. Um, right now, that purpose is to play golf. So until that purpose changes, then we're just going to stay focused because, you know, God doesn't 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 require of us results. What He requires of us is obedience to what He's called us to do. Well, he was he was playing great golf to begin with. It's a hard hole. It's a hard tee shot. It's a dogleg left with water all up the left, and. Uh, he was the first one to go and he pulled out driver and just ripped it over the water, hit it to about 100 yards out. As soon as he hit the tee shot, you could kind of tell like he's on a different level right now than the guys he's playing with. And his playing competitors had a three wood and hybrid and both blocked it right in a bunker. And right there, Irvin knew like, I got this. And he hit a good wedge to 20 feet and then he missed the putt, but he had a tap in. So I just tapped in right, and now I walked away to my coach Nelson and now we just watched the first person putt. He just stood there looking at me and he's like, just let me know. And the first kid putted and missed. So it was down to one more. And, and he, he's just standing there with me. And right before that he putted, Irvin turned around to watch. And, and as soon as the kid hit the putt, Irvin knew. He's like, that missed. And he's just, that was it. It was over. I was so happy. I won my first college tournament. Honestly thinking I was about to have tears coming out from my eyes. But then at the same time, I, I was rushing for a flight. <laughs> couldn't, couldn't do much there. I think in life you have you be going through a lots of up and downs, and this is kind of like it's kind of like similar to golf game. You have lots of up and down. I was able to learn a lot of stuff from 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 golf and actually use it in my my social life as well and my my own lifestyle. At the same time, one year exactly bad. I was shooting like the worst score of my life and. I was thinking that I really come a long way, all the hard work I put in, all the, all the advice and all the encouragement from coaches, from friends, from people back home, really helps me out a lot. I mean, I think it's really hard for me to, to it's kind of hard to say, honestly speaking. Thanks to Matt Atkins for his work on that piece, and congrats to Irvin on a great season. Well, we talk often about dynasties in sports, but the word dynasty doesn't quite seem strong enough for what Liberty Track and Field has accomplished in the Big South. The LU men's and women's teams adding to their impressive resume this past weekend at the Conference Outdoor Championships. Now, the men's and women's teams would each win in dominating fashion, marking the fourth straight year they have swept the titles. Now, it's also been an incredible 12 straight championships for the men and an even more incredible 23rd championship in 25 tries. One of the highlights of the weekend was the performance of Alejandro Perlaza Zapata, which means eat my dust in Colombian. The former Olympian for Colombia won the conference 400 race there with a conference record, program record, meet record, facility record, and Colombian record, a time of 44.86 seconds. The fourth fastest time in the NCAA this year. Flames coach Brent Tolzma earned men's coach of the year honors and co-women's coach of the year honors. He now has 71 coach of the year awards in his career and has led LU to an amazing 98 Big South team titles. Well, coming up, Liberty softball is headed to the NCAA regionals, and we bring you the story of the twin sisters who helped them get there. Then it's our last regular season warm hot in Fuego of the year. Stay with us, game on. We'll be right back. Since 1971, Liberty's had one mission. Training champions for Christ. Our standard is excellence with integrity, and we want to equip you with the resources you need to achieve your personal and career goals. We, the aviators of Liberty University, are committed to becoming leaders of distinction because we are men and women who want to serve others and change the world for Christ. Join us on campus and you will learn to fly using our fleet of 26 aircraft and practice in FAA certified simulators. But most importantly, you will gain the knowledge and experience professional recruiters are looking for. At Liberty University, you will graduate as more than just a pilot, technician, or drone operator. 
you will become a champion for Christ. Each morning begins around 7. I make breakfast for the kids and get them ready for the day. Mornings can be hectic as I'm running my business from home, and when the kids nap, it's the perfect time to work on my courses. By studying at Liberty University without set login times, I am able to craft my own schedule around what works best for my life. This flexibility allows me to work on my assignments during the day so I can spend time with my husband after he gets home from work. As a parent, I have to balance the week from my daughter's dance class to teaching ballet to church activities. Studying online has allowed me to invest in my education while being a strong example to my children. My name is Kimberly. I'm a mom, a business owner, and a Liberty University student. Welcome to Liberty University. We are so glad that you are here. We hope that while on campus, you will experience God's goodness and recognize His abundant blessings and faithfulness. From our thriving academics with over 200 programs and our close-knit community to our state-of-the-art facilities and residence halls, you will see that the Lord is integrated into each part of this university. Fun and excitement also await you here as you attend football games, basketball games, concerts, campus community, convocation three times each week, and much more while developing relationships that will last a lifetime. Each of us has a different path during our time here, but we have at least one thing in common. Not leaving this university the same as when we came. I love this school. I love this school. I love this school. And I hope you will too. Welcome home. Welcome home. Welcome home. Hey, welcome back to the show. As we told you earlier, Liberty Softball is playing in an NCAA regional for the first time since 2011. And twin sisters Amber and Autumn Bishop are a big reason for the Lady Flames' success. The top two hitters on the team, we dug into their story last season and thought it was a good time to look back and see how the twins ended up at LU. I was hired to help bring Liberty Softball to the next level, uh, to be competitive nationally. And so I needed to go out nationally to find some great players. I knew right away that the, these are two girls that have a passion for the game that I call old school, meaning that passion drives them to work hard. And it's not about accolades. It's about using the gifts God's given them to make a difference at the highest level. From the sunny beaches of California to the foothills of Virginia, freshman twins Amber and Autumn Bishop traveled 2,500 miles to play ball for the Lady Flames. And they didn't waste any time making their presence known. And she turns on this one, and it is gone. Two run shot. Good job at the plate there, and her hitting streak goes to nine. But it was no surprise to head coach Dot Richardson. For her, it was love at first sight. I went to see Riley Reynolds compete in what's called a friendly tournament. Well, as I started walking up to the fields, a lot of the coaches recognized me. Been around the sport a little while, and they were like, hey, Dot, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm the head softball coach at Liberty University, the largest Christian university in the world. And they're like, really? What are you looking for? A shortstop. I've got the shortstop for you. And her twin, is really good too. As I'm watching, I look and I go, no, the shortstop's really not what I'm looking for. And, but I wonder who her twin is I'm looking out there. And all of a sudden the third baseman gets a ball and fires it to first. I said, I love that third baseman. Then all of a sudden the outfielder, left fielder, she gets this amazing jump on a ball, fields this ball, fires another one to second base, holds the runner, she gets up, gets a triple. I said, I love that left fielder. So it's time for me to go. And as I'm leaving, I, the coach is like, well, you know, Dot, great to see you again. And, and uh, anything you need? And I said, yeah, I got a question. I said, uh, who's the twin of the shortstop? And she goes, no, that's not one of the twins. I didn't play her at short this game. The twins are the third baseman and the left fielder. I said, I want them. I want them. And if they want liberty, Here's my card, have them call. 
and they called. The rest, as they say, is history. Amber Bishop would set individual as well as freshman records for RBIs, home runs, runs scored, and hits. And despite being injured for part of the season, Autumn would follow close behind, joining Amber as an all-Big South first-teamer as well as first-team all-freshman selection. Head coach Dot Richardson attributes it all to their intense passion for their game and their God. If you don't love what you're doing, there's no passion in it, you know? And I think that's just ultimately what it is. I think God gave us the gift to play softball, and I think he gave us the passion that we have for this sport. If you don't really love what you're doing, like, then why do it? The passion that Autumn and Amber have is a passion with a desire to be the best they can be. And for those two, it's also to become the best in the history of the game. And not everybody thinks like that. Not everybody has that heart. And as a coach, how do you see it? It's evident, even to their teammates, because they're in there in the batting cages all the time on their own. They're out there front tossing to each other on the field or hitting each other ground balls or fly balls. I mean, that is what I'm talking about. Everyone could have an enjoyment of the sport and you know, love to play it, but there's a difference, a difference in having a passion and a burning desire to see how great you can be, to challenge yourself and knowing that it takes hard work, dedication, desire, and a burning um, feeling that there's nothing that's going to get in my way, not emotions, not relationships, not exams, not anything, because when I get on the field, nothing else exists but playing this sport. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking that's about. Right. Love here in Dot Richardson. Bishop Twins have been great, as have the entire softball team this year. All right, 100%. speaking of great, yeah. time for Warm Out and Fuego. Last Regular season edition of Warm on Fuego. Next week, we'll start looking at our Athletes of the Year. Yeah. Uh, but let's begin with Warm. Right. And who are your choices this week? We're going to stick with softball here. Caitlin yeah. McFarland, and I know the Bishops just had an amazing series, you know, amazing tournament. Yeah. But really, Caitlin did a great job of that secondary offense kind of role. And, you know, in that game, I, what do you call this game? The precursor to the final? They played sure. Radford again. It's yeah. like the, the setup S game. I don't know. Whatever you want to call it. She went one for three, a homer, one RBI. But here's the thing I like about her. She gets fired She's up. She's emotional. She yeah. does. When they're when DiMartino's just dropping K's yeah. in there, she's like fist pumping, yeah. getting angry. I love it. I think she might be chirping the batter a little yeah. bit. I hope she is. That's what it is in my mind, at least. So it looks like she'd be a lot of fun to play with. You probably hate to play against her because yeah, sure. she gets so wound up. But her as your teammate, oh, I think that would probably yeah. be the best thing in the world. Yeah, she brings the energy. That's oh, for sure. 100%. Can't wait to see what yeah. they do as their season continues. Uh, Rhett, from warming out to hot. DJ Artis, this guy on the mm. baseball team. What a three years he has had, and you know what, not saying it is, but it could very well be his last days of baseball sure. with the Flames if he gets drafted. But take a look at this. This guy has reached base in 63 straight games. Longest active streak in the nation. Last time he failed to reach base in the contest came on May 2nd, 2017 at Virginia. And so this guy is just a steady Eddie, really. Oh, yeah. Consistency, such speed, and we've talked about it. You know, if he's having a game where maybe the bat's not working, his legs, he can get a chopper to, you know, the third base side, and his legs just get him on base, and he never really goes into a slump because of that. Yeah. So keeps his confidence level high, his consistency is amazing, and it's been so much fun to watch him here in Flames Colors. One of the all-time greats yeah. for the Liberty Baseball team, no doubt 100%. about that. And finally now, in Fuego, yes. your choice for in Fuego, last regular season in Fuego. That's right. Is who? I think it should be your call of this guy's name just a couple minutes ago, Alejandro Zapata. Mm, this guy yes. sounds like a superhero or even like a pop star disco tech kind of guy. Could be. In Colombia. stud but, runner, I know that. Yeah, you know, we were talking about Cali, Colombia. Yeah. This young man has just got a beautiful place to live in the sense that the average temperature is 85 every month of the year. Every month of the year, it is 85 degrees. Wouldn't you love to live I in would something love, that like sounds that? sounds fantastic. It would be good. But you were talking about him earlier on. This guy's just been amazing. He's an Olympian. He's had some remarkable times. You talked about it. He set five records yeah. in one 400 meter. So just the, the season that he's had and he's going to come back has just been unreal. So congratulations to him Absolutely. and the track team. And you have to, I really wonder where Coach Tolzma is holding all those awards because yeah. that's kind of confusing. He needs to a me. big mantle yes. to, to, to hold all those. Right? 100%.
Thanks. Great yeah. job as always. Looking forward to next week. That'll do it for Warm Hot and Fuego. Listen, when we come back, we bring you some exciting news about the show, and Rhett sells it once and for all. Yanni, Laurel, to let you know when we return <laughs> on the other side. Since 1971, Liberty's had one mission. Training champions for Christ. Our standard is excellence with integrity, and we want to equip you with the resources you need to achieve your personal and career goals. We, the business leaders, entrepreneurs, and visionaries of Liberty University, are committed to becoming leaders of distinction because we are men and women who want to serve others and change the world for Christ. You'll find opportunities for competitive fellowships while developing the business ethics, knowledge, and experience that top companies are looking for. Choose from over 50 degree programs such as business administration, marketing, and information technology. At Liberty, you'll become more than just an accountant, executive, or cybersecurity analyst. You'll become a champion for Christ. Every athlete has a story. Why do they strive? What drives them? Are they just doing this for a game? Or is it about how this struggle changes them? We are here to ask those questions. We are here to tell that story. We are Game On. Hey there, friends. Thanks for staying with us. You know, before we go, we wanted to share some exciting news. It's award season in TV, sure. and we here at Game On have received word that we were nominated for seven Emmy Awards. Oh, lucky number seven. Yeah. The most nominations we've ever received. The show as a whole has been nominated for Best Daily or Weekly Sports yeah. Program. Four of our stories received nominations. Our graphics guru, Austin Reddington, was nominated, as well as our audio savant, oh, Alex Short. Nominations show. all around. So very exciting time around here. Yeah. Certainly we wanted to let you all know about it and just brag on ourselves as much as possible. So glad you sat through that. As always, hit us up on social media. We're about out of time at Game on LU. We'd love to hear from you, and you can congratulate us. We take praise. If you want to see any more Emmy-worthy stuff, check out our website as well, GameOnLU.com. You're going to get tired of hearing about that. Hey, for Rhett McGibbon, for Bobby Bullock, I'm Matt Warner. Thanks for watching. We'll see you right back here next time.